Nigerian made chocolate finding a sweet spot in competition with international imports. The United States lifts decades old sanctions on Sudan. How would this impact the economy? Fighters against illegal ivory and rhino tusk trade follow the money trail to bring down global kingpins. Africa 54 starts right now. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to the show that goes around the continent to bring you stories from near and far. I'm Chamberlain Uso at Channels Television here in Lagos, and I'm joined by my colleague at The Voice of America in Washington. And thanks, Chamberlain. I'm Esther Gidu. You are at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at cocoa production in Nigeria. Chamberlain Uso in Lagos brings you that story. Indeed, Nigeria, being a member of the World Trade Organization, has its market open to an influx of foreign products, providing variety and quality. But this leaves the country dependent on imported goods, including those that can otherwise be produced locally. One such item is chocolate. Our report shows efforts by some state governments and entrepreneurs to go beyond planting and exporting cocoa to producing Nigerian-made chocolate. Take a look at the report. If a cocoa pod had the choice of where to offer its highest value, it would probably pick its source. Unfortunately, the crop does not get to choose its journey. The grower, to a large extent, does. A leading agricultural export crop in Nigeria, cocoa beans, moves from the farm to the market and onwards to other parts of the world, where they are processed into finished products such as the savory chocolate. As a country, Nigeria is not unaware of the fact that it is selling itself short by primarily exporting its abundant agricultural produce in its raw form. The federal government and the state governments and the southwest region are on a very serious drive to revive the exports, agricultural crops that have export potential, and in particular cocoa. And the government is not sitting still to ensure that we can revive uh, that level of production and get us to processing. The southwest states of Ogun, Oshun, Ondo, Oyo, and Ekiti account for about 60% of the cocoa produced in Nigeria and in turn makes up to at least 30% of cocoa export. Oshun state, in addition to helping farmers increase production, is encouraging local processors. What Osho State is trying to do is that we are trying to encourage local processors by offering them land at no cost, trying to give them tax holiday so that people will be encouraged. Cross River State in the South-South region is putting up a 3,000 metric ton cocoa processing factory with a target of increasing to 35,000 per annum. This, for the president of the Cocoa Association of Nigeria, is a welcome development. I totally identify with this project, but I also ask the governor to make an integral part of this project to be private sector driven. And I love if he would do that, then it's a sustainable project for the future. Some entrepreneurs are already taking the lead, specializing in making chocolate bars, spreads and more from Nigerian cocoa beans and other local resources such as milk and sugar. The aim is to provide an alternative of imported chocolates. We just felt, okay, why can't we make chocolates in Nigeria? We have a lot of cocoa beans. So that was just what informed what we decided to do. And it has been an interesting journey, but a very challenging one. Cocoa export contributes about 0.05% to the nation's GDP, following immediately after crude oil exports, the largest revenue earner. With talks about diversifying and industrialization, the way to go will be to focus on the manufacturing sector and industries. Well, here now to discuss the need to strengthen Nigeria's industries through business-friendly policies is Mr. Vincent Waini, who is the Director of Advocacy and Research 
at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Welcome to Africa 54. Thank you for having me. Now, while they argued that there may be benefits in Nigeria remaining with those international organizations, but how do we ensure that we don't just keep allowing foreign or finished goods into the country, thereby harming local industries? One way is to tighten our borders for illegal influx of finished goods. That's one way. You know, we find out that our border is very porous. The agencies that should man the border, be it immigration, the custom, and uh, even other security agencies should be alive and well to their duty. Again, we also need to renegotiate or even exit some of these uh, bogus, uh, uh, bogus bilateral agreement that we are in where we are virtually not benefiting. You know, and lastly is to begin to address productive base of the, of the country, make sure that it is easier for us to produce quality products at relatively cheaper, uh, cheaper prices. You know, the meaning of that is that we need to look very critical and quickly for that matter on our infrastructure, be it power infrastructure, transport infra infrastructure, logistics, a whole lot of states within the country, Nigeria. It's not connected to each other, you know, I can read, you know, from Lagos uh, down to um, the eastern part of the country, from Lagos down to the northern part of the country, you know, it's very difficult to move goods, uh, whether it's raw material or finished goods from one point, point to the other. So these are challenges and even uh, power, you know, so by the time all these things are very difficult, it, it becomes very difficult for locally manufactured goods to get to the market cheap and even at the quality. So we're creating room for foreign goods to just flood uh, our, our borders and our country and this cannot continue because okay. it has a very difficult price we're paying on our um, employment and even sustainability and growth. But while you uh, suggest we may have to renegotiate some of these uh, trade agreements, what kind of issues should we take into consideration so that we can also protect local industries here? One of the things we must take into, into cognizance is our comparative advantage. You know, comparative advantage. Um, just to give you a good a good example, the ECT, the ECOWAS, the ECOWAS uh, Common Standard Tariff. This one of the, this policy that makes certain goods or uh, come into the country without even paying a, paying duty. You know, I know this have taken about eighty thousand jobs out of pharmaceutical company alone in Nigeria, and and billions of investment. You know, because uh, pharmaceutical products are classified as essential that should come into the country without any duty you know but again uh, uh, investors in nigeria have spent a lot of money putting pharmaceutical plants and whatever in, in place and they even import uh, raw materials at a certain uh, duty rate but finished goods have to come into the country free of charge so local operators cannot compete so we need to really look at our ability to compete and know what we can do and what we cannot do and really fasten our seat belts and do what those few things we can do and the starting point is food okay. we need to feed ourselves we need to clothe ourselves this is an area we must not leave for foreigners to occupy Mr. Vincent Wani is the Director of Advocacy and Research at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you for joining us Thank today you for on Africa me. 54. Thank you. We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, increasing national participation in Nigeria's oil and gas industry. The move for indigenous companies to get into the game.